Okay, gather around everybody, because I've got something that a whole lot of you have asked about on and off for about two years or so, and I've finally actually done it. Because we're in Cabra Fever Dream season, and I can get away with it now. Local 58, a name that everybody knows and I am too familiar with seeing in my Twitter notifications. <laughs> really. What's the deal with me and this title? I saw Local 58 a while after the first few releases, which were all centered around Halloween of 2017. I thought it was neat, it was cool, and what it was to me was very clear. Local 58 was a short anthology of horror concepts presented in the framing device of a public access cable channel. I also thought this was funny because I already had the idea of using that concept for my theme during October of 2018 when I saw Local 58. I guess you can chalk that up to the synchronicity effect that occurs in the realms of science and the arts, which is another topic entirely. But anyway. That first round of short stories in this framing device were all I saw of Local 58 at the time, now classified as its first season. And that's all I felt I needed to see. Truthfully, there are a lot of channels on YouTube that do this sort of thing, making somewhat related bits of media under the same header but not actually having a cohesive story. And that's exactly what Local 58 initially presented. So when new stuff came out and more people asked me to look into it, I made a mental note to do so on my own time, because really, Local 58 as I had first seen it was just, uh, not that deep. Now, as of August 2018, with the video A Look Back, we've got something that warrants a study. This isn't just a channel making some cool and spooky one-offs now, it's a little bit more deep. How so? Well, let's go through the timeline and I'll show you how it developed. First, some backstory that's going to make this whole project make a lot more sense. The creator of Local 58 is Chris Straub, who wrote the famous, and infamous, Candle Cove Creepypasta, which explores the idea of a paranormal TV show in the static of old cathode ray tube sets. Of course the guy who wrote Candle Cove would move on to make short horror videos based on the alien feeling of public access channels, and it's no surprise they started off as a series of one-off short stories that fell under the same header. You have the creepypasta angle, short stories unrelated to each other, and the old TV mystery angle. Let's see where this all began and trace a line of creative thinking. The first upload was the short, You Are On The Fastest Available Route, a groundbreaking piece of online horror video released on Halloween 2017. This one is actually really brilliant, combining three concepts of media, one of which we never think about as a creative device. Public access channels, dash cams, and GPS. The video starts with a lineup for the schedule, citing the midnight movie, paid programming, and... Oh, never mind about that paid programming. It disappears and is replaced with driving footage. Proceed to the highlighted route. Continue on Holbrook Park Drive, then in 500 feet turn right onto North 38th Street. You will arrive at your destination in 2 hours and 28 minutes. Turn right onto North 38th Street. In a quarter mile, turn left onto Merritt Parkway. You are on the fastest available route. Turn left onto Merritt Parkway, then take the on ramp to Highway 114 North. A note for the curious. Merritt Parkway appears to exist only in Connecticut, and its closest version of a highway named 114 is in Rhode Island. But there aren't any map configurations you can get to line up a jump from Merritt Parkway in Connecticut directly to Rhode Island's Route 114. You are on the fastest route. In 2.8 miles, keep right to stay on service Causeway H516. You will arrive at your destination in 14 minutes. Rerouting. Make a U-turn. Head east for one quarter of a mile, then follow signs for do not enter.
Continue on unnamed road. Then, in 300 feet, turn off your headlights. Oh, can we see that again? Oh, there we go. Yeah, definitely a monster. Make a U-turn. Your destination is behind you. Rerouting. In 500 feet, your destination will be on in 300 feet. Your destination in 250 feet. Rerouting. Your destination will be in 50 feet. You will arrive at your destination. So for anybody keeping score, this video landed with a bang and took off, now sitting at over a million views, and for good reason. There's a genius sense of horrific simplicity in the concept of your GPS being hijacked, and an even deeper terror in realizing you're being led astray by a monster. Nothing unnerves somebody like imagining their GPS assistant telling them to turn off their headlights on some unnamed road. The following episode of Local 58, Contingency, came on the very same night and actually outperformed the previous. We open with standard 3am sign-offs for old public access channels and then experience an emergency interruption, ushering a presentation from the US Department for the Preservation of American Dignity. This is marked to be out of service after November 13th, 1970, and its purpose was to be issued only in the event of a United States complete surrender to insurmountable enemy forces. Wait, what was that? The 51st state is not a place. Interesting. So now we have a bit of understanding what other changes might exist in the realm it came from to be such a radically different America. Let's take a look at this for a second. Local 58 hoax apology card. In the event of accidental public broadcast during off-air remote operation, relay test. Do not use after 514, 1975. So essentially, this message is legitimate. The hoax apology is there simply to cover up accidental broadcasts of it. This short story video suggests a version of the United States whose history veered sharply off course from the current, leading to an armed conflict large enough to suggest attack by insurmountable forces. In the event of such an attack, citizens would be instructed to commit mass suicide nationally in order to preserve American dignity. And then, of course, we have the sheer oddity of the statement, the 51st state is not a place. That probably hints at a reason for all of this. Next up, we have Weather Service on November 1st, 2017. 
The Halloween timeframe that year was one hell of a premiere window for Local 58. Oh, finally, a location. Okay, Edenvale, Icker Falls, Lasker City, the greater Mason County area. So those towns may not exist, but the county does. It's in West Virginia, the county which is made popular by Point Pleasant, West Virginia, the home of Mothman. Now it's all starting to make sense. And wouldn't you know it, West Virginia has a Highway 114. Cool, let's go to the video now and see what's happening in Mothman land. Alright, so this one is pretty easy to figure out. The story of weather service is a one-night struggle between paranormal forces tied to observation of the moon and the reflection of its light in people on the ground at Local 58 who understand there's a sudden flash of evil taking over. We have the alert that goes out, and then we have an immediate redaction. Then there's another attempt to hijack the airwaves in favor of humans, followed by another pull in the tug of war to the paranormal side. Maybe because the human hijacker ended up being grabbed by the blood light of the moon or somebody else got in. Either way, Local 58 itself becomes a weapon of the paranormal force, showcasing the moon that night in a long final shot to infiltrate as many TV screens as possible, and then the short ends. This is the last full episode of the first season and the initial premiere burst of episodes. All that remains is an 18 second station ID, most likely used as a channel trailer for new viewers, uploaded on November 2nd, 2017. Look away, it does not matter, there are other receivers. Easy enough to guess judging by that first episode which showed us the power of paranormal creatures to hijack GPS devices. Local 58 didn't upload past this point until July 30th, 2018, with the episode Show for Children. Judging the first batch of episodes, what we had really was an anthology concept of short video horror ideas. There wasn't really a full-on story. There was a light world built, but not a genuine story. And when Show for Children appeared, as you'll see in a moment, the anthology nature continued, with a hint of world-built development.
So aside from Cadaver, the skeleton boy, there's not much in this cartoon that's alive, except for the moon. As we can see, the moon keeps creeping along with Cadaver right up until the end when he goes underground and lies at the bottom of a grave shaft. Above, we see the figure of the moon roll across much in the same way Cadaver was looking into graves. And with the full force of the moon bearing down, the skeleton boy dies and rots away, just like the first corpse. That makes two pieces now that equate the moon with an evil force. A more cohesive world build was introduced with this upload. The next one, posted August 27, 2018, really hammers things down for us all and gives Local 58 more story credence than it had in its premiere window. Before I roll the rest of the clip, I want to highlight this moment that opens things up. WCLV, first television in Mason County, serving Lasker City, Icker Falls, Edenvale, and now Brood Hollow. Brood Hollow happens to be a property by Chris Straub. According to its Patreon page, Brood Hollow is a dark adventure series that mixes a 1930s comic strip with Lovecraftian cosmic horror. Spanning 250 pages, it tells the ongoing story of Wadsworth Zane, a door-to-door -door encyclopedia salesman who inherits an antique shop in the quaint town of Brood Hollow, West Virginia. Ah, now we're talking. Okay, so in just two steps we've nailed down a sharper context for Local 58. It is absolutely in West Virginia, and absolutely part of a larger universe exploring Mason County's paranormal occurrences. Perfect. Let's continue. Your destination has moved. We send signals to ourselves through their domain. Did we really believe they wouldn't add their own? Now a picture is really starting to shape up. We aren't quite to a full-on story yet, we would need more connected details and genuine characters for that, but we have a world build and a cohesive idea that makes us more than just an anthology series. What's being alluded to here is pretty obvious, but also pretty fun, if you've ever seen the film Videodrome, which is all about something horrible we don't quite understand warming its way through the airwaves of the lesser channels on TV. Local 58 isn't entirely under the control of humans, and neither are the standard methods of communication we use. What else have we got? Anything that brings us closer to a narrative? There just might be. The next video, Real Sleep, is the longest upload yet. It opens with a peculiar touch. This video cassette is non-transferable. It is intended solely for the personal use of Philip Gerhardt.
Okay, so the play here should be fairly obvious. The Thought Research Institute doesn't want people dreaming, making claims that dreams are meaningless and detrimental side effects of sleep. They especially want to impress the idea that there is no such thing as dreams being helpful. There's no symbolism in dreams, especially those that help predict the future, because precognition is a lie. Dreaming is the vestige of a primitive mind. Their solution is the inverse of the Kleitman map, an index of activity in the brain burdened by dreams. By using the inverse map, they can cancel out dream activity, if that's what this tape will be training people to do. During the mix of flashing messages, we have a few peculiarities. Most of them are just reinforcement of what's being taught. Dreams are bad. Do not dream. There are no faces. But some of these messages outright refuse the idea of sleep itself. And then you have definite outliers like, There is work to be done. No good thought follows instinct. They follow night to bleed dreams. Your home has another door. And you owe the messenger. The final worrying statement is, do not see a doctor. This video, if in line with the rest of what's being presented in Local 58's world built, suggests that dreams are either helpful to those experiencing paranormal effects, or dreams become a symptom of those who are affected by the paranormal, and TRI are trying to alleviate the issue. Looking at some of these messages, I'm thinking they might be the bad guys, or they might be getting hijacked. Because again, we don't own the airways or media devices we use in the world of Local 58. They can be manipulated by monsters for their own purposes. This tape doesn't just want people to avoid dreaming. They don't want them to sleep either, and there are even scarier messages we don't understand. Around the time of this video came a Local 58 Patreon. With this, we can see some curious updates. Locator 118F13A, placement of Pentathode Assembly. This was developed in 1931. The closest thing we have for reference to understand what we're looking at is the cathode ray tube, the device responsible for getting images on old TVs in the first place. Penta, the prefix, means five, though I can't quite see how that figures into this device. Here's what I can tell you from looking at it, since I do have a slight understanding of how cameras work. This piece here appears to be a mirror. Light would be reflected or projected onto this and then bounced out through the opening. If my guess is correct, the pentathode is a viewing device a form of TV screen or something similar to a telescope, but what it's actually for is up in the air. On October 9th, 2018, we received an image from the locator, page 79, profiling an episode of Public Eye on Local 58. A hometown tourist paradise talks about the Public Eye's program history of going from far-off location coverage to much more local recordings, highlighting things to see and do in Mason County. The following descriptions are interrupted by frightening messages. You alone. The guilt radiating, and it moves beneath. The dead all moving below. Absence of the sensate. Insects stir. Sightless animals rot. Blood is singing. So yeah, there are monsters in Mason County. Definitely. Now, let's move on to the latest offering from November 1st, 2019. Skywatching.
And now we've got it. The evidence that the moon in Local 58 is indeed horrible. That might not seem like a very nice thing to say, but come on, the moon's definitely looked healthier than it does right here. His throne is a pretty dead giveaway in conjunction with all the other evidence that the moon is a source of evil now, apparently infected by some hideous thing that's hollowed out sections of the big round rock and grown inside it. The light of the moon and its ability to get closer and wreak havoc on people is also clearly on display, though we aren't sure what kind of power it has beyond turning people into subservient drones. Up until this moment, we had what could be considered a world build with strong suggestions toward a narrative. Now, with Skywatching, we have a form of narrative, and continued uploads and posts on the Patreon page will flesh this out into a story. Local 58 has done a pretty bang-up job of growing from a small anthology package into something that still delivers in what seems like an anthology, but certainly does now have a world build behind it and a storyline that's being woven. You get episodes that are different elements of what could be presented on a public access channel or made as VHS tapes in the 80s and 90s, but what's being put forward in them is part of something we can see from Season 2 as a cohesive narrative. One of the best compliments you can give Local 58 beyond that, however, is just how much fun you can have with a single episode cut off from everything else. Truth is, you don't need any sense of a world build or story or even where Local 58 broadcasts from to enjoy what's being uploaded. Just pick one at random, and you'll enjoy a good creep-out session that you can tell somebody had a lot of fun editing together. Public access TV has always felt alien and ripe with the feeling that something horrible or weird could be shown at any moment. I love when people take advantage of that and develop things of this nature. And there we have it. My thoughts on Local 58. It's good. Really good. And now it's getting great. This is a fun time with a lot of love and effort put in, and I'm certain we'll be seeing more of it soon. I'd be thrilled to see any form of live-action work done for this in full-on 80s or 90s public access garbage dress-up. Give me some old ladies book club of Point Pleasant that's an unexpected slow burn into madness or something. That would be awesome. Local 58 is a good time. And you know what? If you show it to anyone, start from the beginning, send them through it all, and then see if they can pick up on the world build that's developing. I'd be curious to see how fast they catch on, and at what point. That's all for now, everyone. Thanks for joining me here tonight. Remember to avoid looking at the moon, keep dreaming, and sleep tight.